Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled, my name is Shaggy, and today I'm doing something a little bit different for this channel. On my playthrough video of Return to Dark Tower, several people commented that they were concerned the game might be too easy. Apparently that's what happens when I win a solo game. Wait, Shaggy actually played something competently? That's it, something is wrong with this design. Most people wondered if the gritty difficulty level would provide an adequate challenge, and frankly, I was curious as well. So I decided to see for myself and play a solo game on Gritty, randomizing everything else. This isn't going to be a full playthrough like I normally do, just a quick rundown of my adventure. I'm also assuming you know how to play. If you don't, go watch my previous playthrough where I teach all the rules. At the end of this rundown, I'll try to answer the burning question, is Return to Dark Tower just too damn easy? Like I said, I randomized everything. For the main quest, I got Destroy the Evil Relics. Three caravans carry evil relics to the tower. Sneak into each caravan and destroy its relics before it can be delivered. For the adversary, I got Bane of Omens. The Bane of Omens stalks one of the heroes mercilessly, draining warriors and giving corruptions. And for the foes, I got... The Spine Fiend, the Clan of Nuri, 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 and the Titan. I then had to put a skull on every building. I don't know if this is a change on Gritty, but it definitely makes it more difficult to remove skulls. We also gain Miris, Myris, Miris, the Horse Lord. If you end your turn in the Grasslands, gain six warriors. Also, we get two wild advantages in Grasslands. I then get to place out a bunch of foes, and I'm not sure if there were more foes on Gritty than there were before. It's felt pretty similar. For the main goal, I had to place three caravan tokens in three different kingdoms. As it says, caravans are dungeons that move towards the tower. Complete each caravan dungeon to destroy its relic. If a caravan reaches the tower, heroes will gain a corruption. Quest at Mirror's Camp in the Cloister after you have destroyed all three relics. For my hero character, I randomly selected the Spy Master. Their banner ability allows them to start their turn in any space in their current kingdom. They also have four movement, so super speedy. I wasn't sure how useful that was going to be, but it ended up being absolutely fabulous. So at the start of the game, I immediately saw that humanoid advantages were going to be a big deal. One of the caravans needed it, the final adversary needed it, and a bunch of the foes also required humanoid advantages, except the problem was there were no humanoid advantages to be seen, not in the treasure market and not on any of the gear. So instead I focused on cleansing, getting a bunch of spirits so I could get my virtue fortunate, which let me reinforce twice per turn at the same building. I could tell that warriors were going to be a big deal. Miris, the horse lord, let me gain six warriors every time I ended my turn in a grassland space. Well, because of the Spy Master and their unbelievable maneuverability, I was easily able to end each of my turns in a grassland and get those six warriors. Then, on top of that, with this virtue, I could go to a village and I was getting 30 warriors a turn. I was having warriors taken out all over the place, but because I could reload 30 warriors in just one turn, I was able to keep up with that and not take much corruption from it. I eventually got Vasa, Vasa, Vasa as a companion, and she helped me clear the one corruption I had managed to get. Also gave two undead advantages, which helped with the northern caravan. There was really only one caravan that I was having trouble with. I hit the western caravan first, and I had five advantages going in, and it was a cakewalk. I hit the northern caravan second. And really the one I was struggling with was the Eastern Caravan, which needed melee and beast advantages, of which I didn't have any. But because of 
another companion quest, I was able to gain the tools of the saboteur, which gave me plus three wild advantages against caravans. So I could easily waltz into the Eastern caravan. I ended up having four advantages going in there, and that was also a cakewalk. So at the end of the day, none of the caravans provided any real sense of danger or tension. I waltzed in, and most of the time I didn't even use all the advantages that I had. Also, the foes were not really putting up any resistance. Again, because of the Spy Master and my maneuverability, it was very easy to stay away from them. They were trying to attack me if I was in adjacent spaces and stuff like that, which rarely happened. I just focused on those caravans, and then I geared up for the final adversary. I went into the final fight with six advantages, and just a load of warriors, spirit, fully geared up. All four treasures, a bunch of gear. I think five things of gear. I was completely loaded and ready to go. I was a little worried about going in with just six advantages, but I could just retreat if I needed to. Turns out I didn't need to. The adversary, the Bane of Omens, attacked my warriors, but then was were also attacking my gear forcing me to lose items, and I had a ton of them to lose, so I didn't need to spend too many advantages there. I also got lucky to get a card that said take two corruption. I had no corruption, so I was able to take that without having to spend advantages. To make a long story short, I won the game, and I beat the adversary in one go. Now, to be fair, I barely beat the adversary in one go. I lost everything, <laughs> like all my gear, all my warriors, and I could have easily lost, but I didn't have to beat the adversary in one go. There's the retreat mechanism, which is a mechanism that I really dislike in this game. I I've almost invented my own hard mode where it's just you can't retreat from the final adversary because that robs that epic final battle of all of its tension. If I can just retreat and regroup and come right back, especially because there's no time pressure. I wasn't feeling any sort of sense that I needed to rush this. I could just take my time, gear up, and go in as many times as I want. I retreated once in one of my plays, and it just didn't feel good. It just felt like I was extending the game, and I sort of just never wanted to retreat again and go through that. I just wanted to either win or lose in that moment. And it would be different. It'd be different if the adversary was out on the board for the whole game. And as one of your actions, you could go and sort of whittle it down, whittle it down throughout the game. So then at the very end, once you complete your goal, now you have one last shot to take it out. And so the more you've whittled it down throughout the game, the easier it'll be at the end. That would be interesting. But to just have it come out at the end and now having this retreat, it just doesn't work for me. And it robs that battle of all of its tension. And I think that's the ultimate problem that I have here is, yes, the game is too easy. The only reason I've come close to losing any game is because, because I didn't want to retreat from the final adversary. I mean, I've won all the games and I really haven't been that close to, to losing any, any game. And while the gritty mode added a little bit of more apprehension at first, and certainly up the difficulty level a little bit, I think there's a few design decisions in here that have robbed the game a little bit of its tension. And I want to talk about that briefly. The first thing is the skulls. The skulls going into the tower, falling out of the tower into different regions, and appearing on these buildings. I need to go around and cleanse them up. There's no tension when those skulls fall. I want to be worried. I want to be, oh, please don't come out in the north, you know? I want there to be some sort of tension to that moment, but there's not. I really don't care where the skulls fall because I've never been in danger of buildings being destroyed or even running out of skulls. I thought maybe in this gritty mode, because you're spreading the skulls one on every building, that there might be more uh, fear there of skulls running out. But because I didn't have a foe that was adding additional skulls, that just was never an issue. By the end there, I wasn't even cleansing that much. And this could be easily fixed. The problem is, when a skull falls into a kingdom, you get to decide where to put it. You get to decide which building to put it on. And so you can spread them out when you need to, or you can clump them together to make 
cleansing easier. And that's far too much flexibility. It robs that moment of any possible tension. What would be better is if the game told you what buildings to put it on. Put it on the building with the most skulls, something like that. Some way for the for the skulls falling out of the tower to be a more tense and dangerous moment, because I've not experienced that in any game, even in this gritty mode. The other thing is the foes themselves. Foes are appearing on the board, slowly gaining strength as the game goes on, getting harder to, to defeat, but they're just not doing enough. It was far too easy in this game to avoid them. I don't think I I don't think I fought one of them or took one of them out for the entire game. I didn't feel motivated to even deal with them at all. I just avoided them because they weren't really hurting me in any way. I, I felt no fear of them being on the board. And that's a huge problem. These foes should be wrecking shop. There should be reasons for me to want to go and fight them and get them off the board. But right now, there's just not. Now, certain foes and certain combinations of foes in certain scenarios might be more devastating than others, but that's sort of the problem here. It's when you have a random setup, things could be wildly different, right? <laughs> it could go from the foes being completely meaningless, which is what happened in my game, to, oh, I need to deal with this one type of foe because it's adding skulls or it's destroying buildings or it's doing something like that. The fact that I could win the game completely ignoring, ignoring the foes and just having them sort of hit me once, if, if at all, is a big problem. The foes need to be more dynamic. They need to be moving around. They need to be causing havoc. They need to be giving me a reason to want to go fight them. There's a lack of tension in this game. And that's the real problem. It's not really about the difficulty. It's not the, it's not the lack of difficulty that is bothering me as much as the lack of tension. In this gritty mode game, I just geared up because there was no time crunch. So I could just gear up, cleanse a little bit, and then attack my objective straight on very few you know, uh, detours necessary, and then gear up before the final boss, fight them in one go, win. Without ever feeling any sort of time pressure or fear of things that are happening on the board. I know what the developers are going to say in response to this because, well, they've already responded in this way in different forums. They will say, you need to try a different combo of foes and adversary and main quest. You need to set up the game in this particular way to make it more challenging. I find this answer objectionable for a couple of reasons. One, where is that mentioned in the rule book or on the app? Nowhere. This is not written anywhere. Why aren't there recommended combos that have been play tested, ranked by difficulty? If it's that important to have the right combo in order to have a more difficult game. For all I know, I'm supposed to be able to randomly put these things together and have a compelling experience. If that's not true, then the replayability goes way down. The other thing I've heard is that I was extremely lucky. I've now played this game four times and have handily won every one. If it's true that I'm just getting lucky, then that's probably a problem with the game and not my particular play sessions. I want to be very clear. I've only played the game four times, and every time has been solo. Maybe co-op is more difficult. Maybe playing solo with two characters is more difficult. But if so, why isn't that mentioned anywhere in the rulebook or on the app? At the end of the day, I don't know about the, the co-op. I don't know about the competitive mode. All I know is, in my plays, the solo game is too easy. Now the good news is I think that it can be easily changed with some simple additional design that could happen entirely in the app. You could make this game much more challenging, much more dynamic, much more full of tension, and could really elevate what is a good game into a great one. And I hope that, you know, Restoration Games and the designers don't just abandon this and that they actually move forward with some of these changes. 
again, I don't think they are difficult ones. I think I think there's things that you could implement here just in the app itself without changing the functionality of the app at all, without having to add any additional you know features. It's not like the app needs to track what's going on any more than it already does. I just think the Dark Tower itself and the foes need to be more punishing, more scary. So ultimately, if you are concerned about this game being too easy, then I think you will find it too easy. I really do. For me, I'm going to be playing this mostly with my kids. You know, in that sort of scenario, I think it works great. As sort of a family weight cooperative game, I think it works great. As a solo game, it's too easy. I would only play on Gritty. It's still interesting on Gritty. I liked it, but it is too easy and it does lack tension. And so hopefully in the future, there'll be some changes that will add more difficulty, add more tension, add more of a dynamic quality. So my final rating for Return to Dark Tower for the solo mode specifically is a 7 out of 10. A good game. I think this could go higher. Again, if some, some of these changes are made, I'm excited to try it co-op with my kids. I think that's probably where this will eventually land. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. And goodbye.